Hello, this is a video lecture on VLSI testing and testability and today's topic is fourth part of BIST. So in this video lecture, we are going to study following topics. First one, output response analysis and in that we have many techniques out of which we are going to discuss four techniques in this tutorial. They are ones count, parity checking, transition count and syndrome checking. So in the last video lectures, we discussed test pattern generator of BIST architecture. So this figure I already shown you it is a typical BIST architecture. We have test pattern generator, circuit under test and output response analyzer. So we have discussed this topic already and today we are going to discuss output response analyzer. So what is output response analyzer? When circuit device under test produces output, it has to be compared with the fault free output and you have to see whether there is any fault or not. If expected output is matching with the obtained output, then the circuit is fault free. So here, but one problem is if the output has a sequence of n bits, then comparing that and storing all the expected output and comparing them is practically not possible. So what can be done is instead of comparing the output, a compressed form of output is compared with a signature. What is signature? Signature is nothing but a compressed form of expected output. So compressed form of the response data is compared with a known fault free response. So typical architecture will be will look like this. So we have DUT here input sequence we apply this is generated from the test pattern generator and output response you store and you compress that this unit will compress that output response you no need to store all the data only compressed form of that output is generated and that is called a signature and it is compared with the expected so we should have calculated the correct signature before and we should store that in a memory and compare the calculated signature with the expected if both matches then there is no error otherwise error is indicated now we will see what are the different compression techniques we are going to implement okay so we have these five techniques ones count parity check transition count syndrome checking and signature analysis and today's video lecture we are going to study these first four okay what is ones count instead of storing all the output what we are going to do is you count number of ones in the output and store it and you first calculated fault free circuit number of ones in the fault free circuits output then in the real time when you apply the input again you find number of ones in the output and compare with the stored expected signature so when there is no fault then you can or when they match that means there is no fault we'll take an example Initially, do not consider this fault. It's a fault free circuit initially you consider. So we are going, we know that it is going to take these input combination. I have not written all the eight possible combination. For example, purpose I have taken only four or you otherwise you have to have all possible combination. So now uh, if this is the input fault free output, what is the output? So since it is AND gate, this will be 1100 and 1010. So fault free output will be 1000. 
and you know that number of total number of ones here only one so we will store only this information not one zero 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 we will store only the one the number of ones that we will store now suppose there is a fault stuck at one now what is the response response is this will be always one and this output is one one zero zero final output will be one one zero zero now if the output analyzer output response analyzer counts number of one it will tell there are two number of ones so expected output expected output is what total number of ones should be one but here what we got total number of ones is two so there is a mismatch so you can tell there is a fault in the circuit again the demerit is in this fault masking what do you mean by fault masking transition count may come to uh, it may come correct or for example you may get if in this case if transition count is one you may get one but output response may be zero one zero zero actual output what we obtained it is a wrong output but still if you count number of ones faulty and fault free both are same similarly one more example given transition count two suppose fault free circuit has total number of ones equal to two but here all these sequence correspond to the same transition count so the fault will be masked so that is one of the demerit in this second technique it is a famous technique it is a parity check you know how to generate a parity bit you need a xor gate but d flip flop required because seriously series we are feeding data in series so we need d flip flop and xor gate so instead of storing all the output what we store is the parity of the circuit that is itself is a signature if it is zero it is even parity or or else it is odd parity so in this example assume initial state of the flip flop is zero initially you clear the flip flop now this is a fault free output fault free output is 100 so if you xor that what is the signature number of ones is one so that is odd parity so this is the expected output so whatever output i am observing it should have odd number of ones but here if you if there is a fault because of that if you receive 1100 then the parity will be zero because total number of ones is 2 now so p of r1 the observed parity of the output response is zero so again the fault is detected the again the demerit is same here that is fault masking fault masking means if there are here in this example one bit error you can detect instead of zero this change to one so one bit error okay if there are two bit error the faulty and fault free parity will be same fault free will be one faulty will be three so it will calculate p of r1 equal to one itself actually it is a fault but still you are detecting as a correct one but there are three bit error that means 1 1 1 all are 1 one then the parity will be even and fault is detected so what is the demerit here what is the limitation even number of faults it cannot detect odd number of faults it can detect okay so that is the demerit of this technique next one is transition count it is similar to ones count but here you will count not only one here you will count the transition from 0 to 1 as well as 1 to 0 the transition you are going to count suppose if you take this example 1001010 then what is the transition count here from 1 to this 0 1 then 0 to 1 it is count 2 then this 1 to 0 3 0 to 1 4 1 to 0 5 so instead of storing this output what we store is a count transition count we are going to store consider this example initially do not consider this fault fault free circuit you consider now if you give this input 
we know the input pattern if you apply that and what is the output we are going to get it is a nor logic so you will get this output so if you count number of if you count the transition here 1 to 0 after that 0 to 1 2 and this output will be 1001 you can do that 11001 with this and you will get this so here again transition is 2 and these two input you will get 00100 and output will be or of these two so how many transition you will have 4 now the homework is you try to again find the transition count assuming stuck at 0 here so then you find what what will be the change i think there will not be any change in this count but here the output will will change and this will also change because this path is faulty so you will get wrong uh, transition count here and also here and what is the demerit again it is the same as the previous one fault masking transition count may be same but the same transition count correspond to different transition for example here 1000010010 so transition count is 5 suppose instead of 100 if i have 1001 this instead of 1 if you have 0 then also so what will be transition transition count will be 5 how it is from 1 to 0 1 0 to 1 2 this will be 0 so 1 to 0 3 0 to 1 4 1 to 0 5 but actual output is wrong so this technique also has the same demerit next one is syndrome checking what is syndrome checking syndrome of a boolean function is defined as k divided by 2 power n where k is the number of min terms and n is the number of input lines we will take an example of a 3 input AND gate if you write the truth table of 3 input AND gate how many min terms you will get you will get only one min term that is all the inputs are one so k is number of min terms that is one only and number of input line number of input lines or number of input combinations how many combination you have three input means 2 power n so n is number of input that is 3 2 power n means so it will be 8 so 1 by 8 similarly if you take two input or gate if you write the truth table you will see that it will have three min terms only for 0 0 combination output will be 0 and if you write the syndrome it will be 3 by 4 now if our circuit has two block f and g with inputs x and y and one condition is x and y do not share any input if that is the condition they are terminated by a gate l let l be a gate then what syndrome you get it is the syndrome of the total system now we can analyze like this if gate type l is or gate then total syndrome of the system is nothing but s1 plus s2 minus s1 s2 because since it is a or gate the common thing we have to remove so syndrome s3 will be s1 plus s2 minus s1 s2 and again and gate then what is the syndrome it is s1 s1 s2 you have to multiply so now we will see what is this f what is this g and what is this l and how we can calculate s1 s2 s3 remember one thing x and y they should not share any input if they share any input then formula will change so we will discuss we will restrict our this one only to input where they do not have any common uh, common signals we will take example and see so first example is a b c d and f1 so here can you identify each block this f is nothing but this and gate and this g is nothing but one more and gate and x and y is nothing but a b input see it is a collective input x and y is the collective input and what is l here l is a or gate so if you write the truth table and you calculate f1 so what you will get you see the this column only 
0 0 0 you just try that you will get these outputs now according to that formula if i want to calculate what is the s1 s1 is the syndrome of block f that is syndrome of this one that i have written here 1 by 4 syndrome of second one s2 1 by 4 now syndrome of third one s3 it's 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4 minus that is s1 plus s2 minus s1 into s2 so what you will get 7 by 16 so without that formula using from this two table also if you calculate the syndrome so how many min terms you have you can calculate the total number of min terms is 7 so then also you will get the same syndrome or you can use the formula similarly try with the or gate here what is the difference here this f and g are not and gates here it is or gates so formula will be what but this is or gate same or gate the formula will be same but s1 s2 value are different it is 3 by 4 and 3 by 4 and if you calculate s3 that is s1 s2 minus s3 sorry s1 into s2 you will get 15 by 16 so from this method if there is a fault the syndrome value will change syndrome value will change so you calculate fault free syndrome and compare with the faulty so we know bef beforehand we will be knowing what is the expected syndrome if it is a and gate what should be the syndrome so if we get different then we can uh, tell there is a fault in the circuit so thank you that's for today